In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the Mobius software looper within Reaper. So, first of all, what we need to do is create a new track from which we're going to record and set this track here to whatever input source you are going to use. In my case, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to set it to this port, which corresponds to a synthesizer, um, just to give you visual feedback. Record enable and monitoring enable. And what that will give us is a sound in the channel. No surprise there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create the actual track where Mobius will be sitting on. So creating the track and inserting Mobius as a plugin on that track. This will give us this nice window of Mobius sitting on this track too now. Okay, inside Mobius there are a few things you need to configure. So let's go through them. The first of all, under the track setups window, you see you can set all your eight tracks to different um, uh, to different settings. For me, it worked quite well to set track one to sync source host. What that will do is that Mobius will listen to your host tempo, which is here at this moment set to one hundred twenty, and will sync this track one to your host. If you don't want that, just set it to default or none or whatever you want. But this is nice if you want to actually record your looping performance and have everything synced up very nicely with um, yeah with your BPM setting. All the other tracks you can see are set to sync source default and sync source default is track. What that means is that track 2 to 8 will sync up to each other and not to the host. Um, for me this works quite well because it allows me to have everything synced up basically to track 1 which is my master track and this track will sync up to Reaper. You could also set this of course to host um, I don't like it like that because if you see here for the host you can set it to bar or beat okay so if you set it to bar that means that at each bar there is a sync point okay so when I hit the record button for example it will wait until the next bar if I set it to track it will wait until the next of these tracks is finished okay so yeah, basically just play around with this a little bit, but I prefer it like this, track 1 syncing up to the host and tracks 2 to 8 syncing up to basically each other. Now the next thing on this page is the plugin output port. Each track can be sent to a different plugin output port. And as you can see here, they are all set to a different port from 1 to 8. Those are stereo ports. The plugin input port on all these tracks is set to port 1. Um, you can also change this if you, for example, have more than one input track and you want, and you always want, for example, you have your guitars on track 1 and the keyboard on track 2, and you always want the guitars on 1 to 6 and the keyboard on 7 to 8. And then you could, for example, set this here to input port 2. But I personally prefer um, having it listen to just one input port. It makes it a little, little, little bit less uh, confusing, in my opinion. Okay, that's the track setup page. Next thing, global parameters. Make sure that monitor audio input is enabled. Otherwise, you will not hear any music coming through Mobius. Um, or actually Mobius will only be playing music or you will only hear music when a loop is playing you will not hear um, basically you have no monitoring okay so turn this on the next thing under MIDI devices make sure you select the MIDI device with which you're 
want to control Mobius, if at all. But if you want to use a MIDI device, make sure you select the MIDI port of that device here. Now mine is set to a MIDI interface in Yum 2 g and this is connected to a Behringer FCB. So I'm using that to control the Mobius looper and therefore you have to select it here. <clears throat> the next page is the MIDI control page and this is set up in a way that all these functions can be controlled by the Behringer including for example here feedback output level you have uh, of course record undo redo uh, overdub and stuff like that okay all of this is here um, there is a nice tutorial on the web how to set up this and also how to program the the Behringer FCB so I'm not going into that here but I will include the link in the descriptions below so check that out okay so basically everything here is set you can also see very nicely that track one here is synced up to reaper whereas the other tracks are actually not so if i would start with track two then i would actually not be in sync with reaper and if i then would record track one i would get into problems okay so let's head back to reaper now what we want to do is to create eight more tracks. Those eight tracks will now serve as the basically return tracks for each of the tracks inside of Mobius. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just send the audio from the Mobius track to all of these eight tracks. Okay. Perfect. Now we go here and disable the master parent send. So the audio is not going from here to the master. It's only going to these eight receiving tracks. Also go here and check 16 track channels so Reaper knows that this plugin actually sends out 16 different channels of audio, eight stereo channels. And the next thing to do is then just to root everything correctly. So audio 1 and 2, which corresponds to the track 1 in Mobius, goes to 1 and 2 on track 3. 3 and 4 goes to track 4. 5, 6 to track 5. Uh, 7, 8 to track 6. 9, 10 and so on. You get the picture, I guess. 11, 12. 13, 14, and 15, 16. And just for good measure, I'm going to disable all the MIDI sense here because the, the channel, the track on which Mobius is sitting on will be receiving MIDI data and it will be receiving MIDI note data in order to control Mobius. And just don't want that to be sent to those tracks here because if I add some effects, for example, here that are controlled by MIDI, just don't want to have any confusion. So there is no MIDI sending over to these tracks on the audio. Now what this has done is that each of these tracks now corresponds to, the, these, to, to those tracks here, 3 to 10. Perfect. The last thing basically to do is now send the audio from this track here which is our input track if you remember to the actual track here to mobius and again disable master parent send and if i didn't forget anything then you should probably now see music perfect and when you enter mobius again what you can see now is that depending on which track i choose within mobius the audio will switch over to another receiving track. <clears throat> Perfect, right? Now, why do I do this? Well, it gives me the ability to record my looping performance and record each track of Mobius into a different track in Reaper, which then gives you quite a lot of editing abilities uh, later on. And also, of course, if you... Um, if you uh, I want to say, 
Uh, sorry, forgot about it. Doesn't matter at all. Okay, in order to record from these tracks 3 to 10, what you need to do is you mark all of them, you record enable them, <clears throat> and now you right click on the record button and you choose record the output, stereo output latency compensated. What that does is that Reaper will now record the output of these tracks, not the input. Um, which makes sense because if I choose an input here, all I can do is choose from my audio interfaces. And I don't want to record from my audio interface, I want to record from what's going into the track. Okay, so what I'm recording now is the output of all these tracks. I'm now going to disable recording here because. I mean, this, it really doesn't matter. You can also just leave record enabled here. It just gives you a track with everything you played in, in, in one channel, basically. So you could, you could just record enable this. It doesn't matter. It's basically redundant because the stereo mix of all these channels here will basically be the same thing. Not exactly. This is just your, what you really played. Um, so I don't know, I have no use for this channel, so I disable it. The last thing you need to do is take advantage that this channel here is basically just working as a conduit. So the audio comes from here and the audio goes to here. So what you can do on this channel is you choose here a MIDI input device and you choose the device where your Behringer or whatever foot controller you're using is connected to. And again, record enable and very important, monitor enable, because without this and this, the MIDI will actually not be received and sent into Mobius. Now if I did everything right, I should be able to control Mobius with my foot controller right now. And yeah, perfect, it works. Okay, and basically, yeah, what I can do now is just use the foot controller to change between the tracks, start recording tracks, and have fun. One last thing to remember, if this is actually set to to the, the, the host, to sync up to the host, the host will then of course have to be playing in order to, um, in order to receive the correct um, syncing information okay now you can see that this one is counting the same bars as Reaper does so if you sync track one to your host make sure the host is actually playing you don't have to be recording just playing so that the syncing information goes through and yeah basically what you can do then is you can just play something and when it change over for example you see again the audio is switching to the different tracks 8 to 10, 9, 10 and yeah that's it and if I would hit record right now I could play, I could loop and I could record everything right in here and yeah you can basically then start playing around with this you can add MIDI effects right here uh, or not, not MIDI effects but you can add audio effects right here um, what you can also do, which is sometimes quite nice, you just create a new track and um, basically use that track as a folder for everything here. Because, yeah, I like it like this <coughs> because then you have basically a, a stereo bus of all these channels here. So you could apply some effects here which work on everything. Or you could just apply effects here working on single channels and yeah of course if you have a MIDI controller you can then map controls here to your MIDI controller and yeah go crazy basically but yeah this is the the principal setup and it works very well thank you for listening and yeah hope you learned something hope I was of help see ya